Here we go! My friends, speedrunning never ceases to amaze with the discovery of new strategies. Some so complex, requiring such a deep understanding of the coding, programming, and cutting so much time off the game, that you wonder why speedrunners didn't choose to become rocket scientists or epidemiologists instead. But for every clever, incredible strategy that gets discovered in a game, there were dozens that were imagined but didn't end up working. In this video, we'll learn about some strategy ideas in GoldenEye 007 speedrunning, which at first thought sounded like they might save some good time, but upon closer inspection turned out to be actually slower, impractical, or otherwise not viable. Here are speedrun strategies which have been debunked. So here's a wild strategy idea to start us off. It became known years ago that any item you throw in Goldeneye, mines or grenades, can often pass through walls if you're looking away and hence unloading said wall. This knowledge gave rise to the strategy on Cavern's Secret Agent where you toss a mine through the ceiling over the wall and it lands and destroys these computers for Objective C. There are other places where this technique is used, like on Surface 2 for the communications link, and on Control for these two mainframes, part of Objective C. So where else could this be used? Well, one idea was on Depot 00 Agent. Depot 00 Agent has Objective A destroy this ammunitions dump, which is usually done in speedruns by destroying one box and then letting the chain of explosions take place while you're off strafing towards the end of the stage. But this requires you to stop at this slow roller door, which takes over two seconds to open, then step inside, fire five shots at the boxes, and then leave. So what if there were a faster way? What if you could get a grenade from a guard and quickly throw it into the ammo dump warehouse, it all blows up, and you can go on your way saving lots of time, probably somewhere around 5 seconds. Sounds great, right? And the crazy thing is, the throw actually works, in that it passes through the building and destroys stuff inside. However, here's the first problem. Getting the entire dump to blow with this method is incredibly difficult. The chain reaction doesn't go off the same way it does when you shoot out this particular box. What happens instead is that the nade explosion destroys all these boxes in its radius, but burns out immediately, with no chain reaction finishing off the rest of the boxes. This means that your nade throw would have to be incredibly precise for a chance at a completion. But this is speedrunning after all, so that's not an insurmountable problem. However, this next bit is. You see, the only guards on depot who can pull grenades are spawning guards. Spawning guards have incredibly complex criteria on depot to determine if and when they will spawn, but one thing is absolutely consistent. They do not spawn until 40 or more seconds into the level. The current record on depot double agent is 45 seconds, and you pass the ammo dump area around 25 seconds, so there is no case where you'd encounter a spawning guard who could plausibly pull a grenade before getting to the ammo dump. Simply put, spawning guards spawn too late into the level to make the use of grenades on depot a viable speedrun strategy. An amazing and fun strategy idea, albeit one which is thoroughly debunked. In Goldeneye, some items which are needed to complete objectives cannot be switched to by pressing A, the usual method of switching weapons, and thus require you to pause to select said item. The covert modem on Damn Double Agent, the guidance and launch protocol data on Aztec, the diffuser and tracking bug on Frigate, and so on. 
Silo Double Agent holds the distinction as the stage that requires the most pauses, having to pause once for the camera and four times for the plastiques, which must be placed in four unique rooms up the missile silo. Silo also makes heavy use of skipping, picking up these key cards from scientists, which unlock the doors to the main silo rooms. But in turn, you need to fire your KF-7 shots with good timing to lure guards to open these doors instead. Now, pausing in GoldenEye is an interesting mechanic. The first pause you do takes just over 2 seconds to go into the pause, and just over 2 seconds to come out of it, exactly 4.55 seconds in all. Plus, you come to a stop, completely losing full speed. So a pause, all in all, wastes about 5 seconds. So what if we were able to skip just one of the pauses on Silo, travel from room to room while holding the plastiques, throwing two plastiques with only one pause? A free 5 second time save. Sounds great in theory, right? Well, here's the first issue with keeping plastiques out between rooms. For one, you won't be able to shoot to lure guards to open the doors, so you'll have to obtain a key card from a scientist to make this work. Not terrible, since you usually get the one from the first room scientist anyways, but having to open the rest of the doors manually instead of shooting to lure the guards to open them will lose some time. Okay, but then having to keep out your plastiques, you can't switch weapons to warp doors, and this continues the time loss with this strategy. Having a door open or warping a door saves about a second each. You can't injure guards to avoid back boosts. Oh, and there are these guards on tight catwalks who you will almost always get stuck on, and you can't switch weapons to warp past them. So yeah, this idea falls apart pretty quickly. Not only that, but there's this thing called quick pausing in Goldenot. Each time you enter a level, the first pause takes the 4.55 seconds as previously mentioned. But with each subsequent pause, up to six pauses, the pauses get faster and faster. To the point where if you've paused six times on the level, your seventh and subsequent pauses will only take 2.41 seconds rather than the 4.55 seconds. This is an example of how it's often not the obvious strategy that ends up saving time, but rather an unexpected or different method that ends up paying off. In this case, quick pausing a couple of times early while waiting for doors to open loses almost no time, and your pauses in the later half of the level will be all at the fastest speed. What this means is that the whole carry the plastiques from room to room idea can't save up to 5 seconds as originally theorized, but could only save 2 or 3 seconds, if done perfectly. And given now we know about the expected time losses moving room to room while holding the plastiques, no warping, no luring guards to open doors, getting stuck. Yeah, saving time with the two plastiques, one pause strategy just isn't going to happen. A great idea, but yet another strategy debunked. Surface 1's secret and double agent are twin levels, with the same objectives, and as one of the game's longest stages, has seen numerous strategy ideas, many of which have failed. A traditional run of Surface 1 picks up this grenade launcher right beside a guard you must eliminate to gather a large key, something that opens a cabin with an objective later on. Now if you're familiar at all with Street's Agent, you'd know that using a grenade launcher, or GL, to look down and self-boost is a useful and productive strategy. We can do this on Agent as a look down boost only takes about 2 or 3 bars of health, but on Secret Agent it might take 6 or 7, and on Double Agent you just straight up pass away. So how can we self-boost on Surface 1, Secret and Double Agent? Well here's a thought. What if you could strafe backwards, shoot the grenade launcher just behind you so the edge of the explosion hits you, propelling you forward? Or at least your backwards strafing gets a boost forward. Makes sense, right? Yeah, you'd have to find somewhere to spin around and learn to strafe at least a portion of the level backwards, but it can't be so hard. And you stand to gain a bunch of time-saving boosts. Seems like a promising idea. But here's the thing. Henrik Weister Norgren, the 
GoldenEye Tool Assisted Speedrun Master and Analyst looked into this, and as it turns out, backwards strafing is just straight up slower. Like, a lot slower. Just to illustrate the point, here's strafing from the gate on dam to the ending staircase, forwards and backwards. It takes about 19 seconds to make the distance in forward strafe, and 21 seconds in backward strafe. A time leak of roughly 10% slower. Truly remarkable. This is so slow that not even 6 extra boosts could save you, so this idea gets a big fat zero. But hey, all of that is okay because there's another epic Surface One strategy idea. You see, while the grenade launcher is pretty close to the guard who has the large key, might it theoretically save time to just skip the grenade launcher altogether? In this comparison clip, it appears this saves about 1.5 seconds. Now, at the end of Surface 1, there's this grate with four locks to shoot off, so that you can enter the ventilation tower, where the level despawns. Obviously, shooting it off with a KF-7 takes about two seconds, whereas destroying it with a GL takes, well, no time at all. So this trade-off isn't worth it, unless you can find a guard on the way who pulls a grenade, which you would then use to destroy the locks at the end. This strategy was widely viewed as theoretically possible, but too unlikely to go for, and it was believed that eventually the strategy might be used in a shocking untied world record sometime in the future. In fact, the GoldenEye Tool-Licited Speedrun from 2011 by Weister and Scared Sim uses this technique. However, in practice, there is almost never an appropriate guard from who you can get grenades on this level. Only spawning guards can pull one, and there are only three spawning guards on the level at any given time. Even if you could manipulate the various luck factors into getting a guard on your direct path, guards still only pull grenades 4.3% of the time. But there's a bigger reason this isn't used. As it turns out, we did eventually figure out how to self-boost using the grenade launcher. There are numerous points on the level where you can fire directly down and get a boost, without losing too much health generally as you are falling off high snowbanks on the stage. Also, we learned these cute forward side boost things, which are nearly as good as a look down boost. On Secret Agent, you get 9 nades in the launcher. Using 1 for the end lock shot, this leaves 8 nades to self boost with, saving something in the range of 2 or 2.5 two seconds. So counterintuitively, it's actually faster to pick up the grenade launcher and use it to self boost, rather than skipping it to save 1.5 seconds in the large key room. All in all, Surface 1 is a remarkable example of how, sometimes, the fastest strategies can be just optimizing what's already known, rather than trying too hard to think outside the box. On a similar tone, here's the granddaddy of theoretical GoldenEye strategies. On Control, Objective C is to destroy all six of these mainframes. After Natalia hacks away out of the first room for you, you travel down this pathway, dip into this cul-de-sac, pick up the remote mines, backtrack slightly, then proceed through the silver crate area onto the rest of the stage. Ah yes, so what if we could skip picking up the remote mines. Years ago, this was believed to be some sort of god strat, guaranteed free untied world record trick, saving multiple seconds. But honestly, just now doing a video comparison, it appears to only save about one second. But let's entertain the idea of skipping the mines to see if we could plausibly save that one second to edge out a new record and optimize the stage. Well, here's the first problem with skipping the mines. You'd then have to farm six grenades from the guards during the Natalia Protect sequence. The mainframes don't explode by shooting at them, they require an explosive, and mines and nades are the only explosives on this level. I don't think I've ever seen a run with three or more grenades pulled during this sequence, let alone the four or five or six you'd need for this strategy. 
but you can injure guards to reset their animation and give yourself another 4.3% chance of them pulling a grenade, and repeat this a ton of times over the course of a 2.5 minute protect. Even so, there's a further problem. Using a mine to destroy this section of glass for a quicker return to Natalia saves roughly 3 seconds over running around the long way. So you'd lose all the time gained from skipping the mines, and then some right here. So yeah, strategy debunked. There is one plausible solution, that being headshotting a guard in the silver crate area who is pulling a grenade. Again, something that will only happen 4.3% of the time, and using this nade to blow up the section of glass, shortcutting your way back to Natalia. The tool assisted speedrun does make use of this, However, there's just no practical setup for it on console. The grenade has a fuse, and you would need to prime it holding Z before passing through this door, which means you couldn't switch weapons, which would prevent you from warping the door, something that will lose nearly a full second. Combine this with the fact that we now boost once or twice with the mines on Agent and Secret Agent on our way over to this area, saving another 0.3 or 0.6 seconds, so yeah, in not warping the door and not boosting, you already lose all the time you would save by skipping the mines. It just doesn't save any time at all. This strategy idea is a great example of one that sounds obvious on the surface, but with any ounce of investigation reveals it's not only harder to pull off, but much slower too. So there are some strategies in Goldeneye which sounded good on the surface, but were eventually thoroughly debunked. If you know of any more of these sorts of strategies in any game, I'd love to hear about them. So let me know in the comments or another way. In the meantime, good luck to all the speedrunners on their quests, wishing you all health and happiness. Stay true, and I'll see you in the next stream or video.